Hi everyone, I'm Lavanya Nimani and I'm a PhD student at the Observatory of Rome in Italy. And I talk to you today about my work on machine learning and computer vision for the next generation of extra galactic surveys. My advisors are Professor Adriano Fontana, Professor Roberto Maoli, and Dr. Emiliano Mardin. I would like to thank the organizers of the conference for giving me an opportunity to present my work today. It's a great pleasure, especially because my machine learning journey started with hearing a talk from Michelle Loschner, who's giving a talk in this conference on Friday. Onto the motivation for this project, in this Hubble deep field image, we can see some examples of galaxy blending, which is a confusion effect that's created by the projection of photons from galaxies on a given line of sight. This is a problem since to estimate parameters, we need to reconstruct their individual light profiles. And with machine learning, we can try to solve this problem in an unbi unbiased and more accurate way, as opposed to standard methods like Sextractor. These reconstructions can then be used as priors for template fitting codes like default and also for retrieving galaxy properties for these galaxies in blends. So yesterday, Hubert explained very well what deep blending is, but for those who missed his talk, you can imagine that there are these two galaxies and they are not physically merging, but since they are a different redshift, so they're physically separated. But since they are on the same line of sight, it appears to us that they are very close together and this is blending and we want to de-blend them or get their individual light profiles. So for our work, we used two different variational autoencoders. Variational autoencoders are deep generating models that have two parts, an encoder that encodes information that is fed to a bottleneck layer and a decoder which uses this encoded information to reconstruct the original input. The deep blending algorithm uses two such variational autoencoders. The first one trained on isolated galaxies and the second one on blended galaxies. So you can see here that there are two clearly visible sources. The second one uses the trained decoder of the isolated galaxies via E since this one is trained to produce a single galaxy. Then the encoder of the blended galaxies learns to map its features to the bottleneck for the central galaxy, such that it would be the same point in latent space or this bottleneck layer as it would have been if it were a single galaxy. And hence, using this trained decoder, it's then reconstructed to be a single galaxy, hence deep blending. So for our data set, we used use simulated galaxy images. These were created using egg. That's a code that can generate mock galaxy catalogs with realistic positions, morphologies, fluxes from the far ultraviolet to the far infrared. We generated catalogs for the Euclid visible band with a zero point magnitude of 23.9. And we also made some masks on magnitude and bulge radius and disk radius so as to keep our distribution more uniform. And finally, the stamps were created using CalSim, which is an image simulation toolkit. And we ended up having something like 250,000 galaxies. So from those, we select a subset of 150,000 galaxies. And these were split into two. So for the first variational autoencoder mm -hmm. that works on isolated galaxies, we selected 50,000. And adding noise becomes our input. And this in total is our whole data set. The rest 100,000 galaxies were used for blended sources this blending is done by picking two different galaxies on random. And the first one is placed in the center, and the second one in an annulus around the first one. 
and then the pixels are added so as to emulate blending. And the output of this is the original central galaxy without blending. So this becomes our second data set. Then we start training our isolated galaxies and we can check training by looking at the loss curve which shows the total loss of, uh, of the algorithm. And this is the sum of the reconstruction loss, which indicates how well the galaxy image is being reproduced, and also the KL divergence loss that ensures that our latent space has good properties. This is then visualized using T3, which is helpful for visualizing any high dimensional data into lower dimensions. So we use Disney to visualize the 100 dimensional latent space in two dimensions. These dimensions can be thought of as hidden features that the network has learned. We use some metrics to check the performance of our network, which include cosine distance and mean square error. And we can see that the, for the first network that works on isolated galaxies, both metrics tend to do well. So we plotted uh, the metrics at the end of training for each of the galaxies. And we see that their orders are 10 to the power minus 7 and minus 3. So very close to 0 as we would want. Okay, so the results finally on the isolated galaxies. In the left plot, you, you see the test image flux and the variation order encoder flux that's estimated by simply adding the pixel values of the image. We see that they correspond very well. Uh, when we scale the errors, we can see that the mean error is 2 to the power minus 3, which is very close to 0. So we can see that it's an unbiased way of estimating or reconstructing these profiles. And also that the standard deviation is within 10%. So the predicted fluxes on test image is within 10% for most galaxies. Then the blended galaxies are trained using the decoder from the isolated galaxies. Here we see again the loss, the sum of the reconstruction and the KL diversion loss. Looks like it's converging. And we check that the latent space again shows a normal distribution. For the blended galaxies, the metrics perform well too, again of the order of 10 to the power minus 7 and 10 to the power minus 3. And finally, our results on the reconstruction of the blended galaxies using the flux, which is the sum of all the pixels. So here on x-axis is the test image flux, and here is the prediction by the way E. And then we scale it in the right plot and we see that most of them are within 15%, where the mean error is 10 to the power minus 4, and the standard error is within 10%. So we see that the predicted fluxes on the test image within 15% for most galaxies. So let's look at some examples now. Here, the leftmost image shows the blended galaxy. So we can see that there's number one and number two. The second image shows this central galaxy before it was blended. This is the prediction for the central galaxy by our VAE. This is an error between the two and then the error normalized by the peak. And we can look at some other examples. And it seems that the VAE is able to reconstruct the central galaxy very well. So to give an overview, the isolated galaxies gave us an unbiased and well-constrained results, which we saw from different metrics like cosine distance, mean square error, and also the relative flux errors. So the means were very close to zero. The standard deviation is within 7%. And this told us that the first network works well, which was used in the second one. And this is working on the blended galaxies, where we got relative flux errors 
of the order of 10 to the power minus 4 and standard deviation within 10 percent. So we could say that the errors on reconstruction of the central galaxies in blended pairs show very promising results with relative errors within 10 percent. So for the future, I plan to apply this work on realistic galaxies, which are the ones actually you saw from Hubert's talk, which were generated as part of Euclid morphology challenge, consisting of five fields, a field of view of 0.5 square degrees, and think of applying something like transfer learning techniques to go from simulation to real galaxies. And I also want to combine the two goals of deep blending and parameter estimation into one network. So as of now, we have this sort of network where there's an input image, there's a bottleneck, and there's a decoder that gives you an output image of blend, deep blended image. But it would be uh, more useful if I have a deep blend source. And at the same time, using the latent space is able to give us estimates into parameters like fluxes and other morphological parameters like ellipticity and so on. So thank you for your attention.